As if you didn't already know, here is Oceania, and this is Australia. Let's take a look at its history. The Aborigines, who migrated there from India via Southeast Asia in the late Pleistocene era, were the original occupants. They were divided into roughly 250 different tribes, each with their own language and traditions. The Aborigines were skilled hunters, trekkers, and storytellers, and their distinct music and art style are instantly recognizable. However, it should not be assumed that the Aborigines lived in a paradise of blissful harmony prior to the arrival of Europeans. After thousands of years of almost total isolation, these things began poking around Australian shores and Europeans in the 15th and 16th centuries were energetically exploring the world. And the Portuguese and Spanish sniffed a bear up here for a while, but they didn't see anything of value in Australia and didn't bother settling. The Dutch explored and charted the west coast of what they called New Holland, and Abel Tasman discovered Tasmania from Demon's Land, but Tasman saw nothing profitable there later, so no one really bothered with Australia for a long time until the latter half of the 18th century when the Britons discovered it. Captain James Cook explored the east coast and claimed it for Britain in 1774, naming it New South Wales. Meanwhile, Britain had lost its American colonies and needed more land, especially because they couldn't send their convicts to America, so the first fleet set sail and arrived at Sydney Harbour in 1774, establishing the first settlement with Arthur Phillip as governor. Arthur Phillip was a good man who wanted peace with the natives, even after they speared him. The Brits then rolled up their sleeves and began establishing separate colonies and towns all across the land and getting it all going wasn't an easy disease and hunger and more and more explorers settled, and wool became the most lucrative export, and then in the 1850s gold was found yes gold was found. People flocked from Europe, America, and China to get their hands on some during the frontier days of burgeoning cities when Geller drovers and dusty swagmen roamed the streets. With the help of nostalgic bush poets like Banjo Peterson and fearless bush rangers like Ned Kelly, an Australian identity was established, and the various colonies adopted it. The Federation of Australia was formed in 1901, with Sir Edmund Barton as the first Prime Minister. However, there were concerns that non-European immigrants, particularly Chinese immigrants, would undermine the new Australian identity so the government passed the Immigration Restriction Act or White Australia. Policy to keep the country majority British now there was a general view at the time that Aborigine ways would slowly die out so the government moved to cushion the fall by taking custody of Aboriginal children from their mothers presumably for their own good, but like many government policies it was a disaster and the sorrows of these stolen generations are still felt today. And while we're on the subject of bad government decisions where the First World War saw Australia take part in the war and while we're on the subject of bad government decisions were the first world war the economy grew under the popular billy hughes and despite the great depression australia still managed to win cricket matches and build the harbour bridge in world war ii Australians constantly feared a Japanese invasion, and Japan bombed Australia in 97 times, killing many as besieged Britain couldn't offer any help in the Pacific. General MacArthur utilized Australia as a base, and Curtin formed an alliance with the United States. In the jungles of Papua, U.S. and Australian soldiers beat Japan in the Kokoda Track campaign, and tighter American relations were developed as a result. As a result, Australia engaged in both the Korean and Vietnam Wars, which coincided with mass migration of Southern and Eastern Europeans into Australia. Robert Menzies' leadership supervised a booming economy with no signs of change on the horizon. The White Australia policy was officially abolished in 1970 and immigrants from all over the world, particularly Asia, began to return to Australia. Despite setbacks, Australia's economy has grown since then.
In any case, Australia is a country that was created not long ago, but quickly became one of the best and richest in the world. Aussies have given the world a lot of science, music, entertainment and sporting stars, but what does the future store for Australia? Like, share and subscribe to our channel.